Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed a little fun science. And now you see why I suggested that you go ahead and fill out that grid and flip your own coins, because that's what Charlie did. So he actually flipped the coin. So if some of you might have actually flipped the coin. Some of you might have mentally flipped the coin. And you might have had the experience of either Charlie or his friend, right? Um, we have a tendency to think that the world is more orderly than it really is. So we see relationships between things that don't really exist. The gambler's fallacy was illustrated by Charlie's friend who thought the roulette wheel had had to come up the other color. It had to. It's been this color too many times. It's got to come up the other color. No, it doesn't. The roulette wheel is designed to be balanced. It's supposed to do what it's supposed to do without any kind of bias. So it doesn't know what color it has come up on the last spin. Now, physics might encourage it to you know, tend to fall sort of close to where it landed last or whatever, you know, right? There's the energy of the, of the spinner's arm. There's a lot of factors that can determine where it's going to land. Um, but there's no one factor that determines, I can tell you for sure that there is no factor called it knows what color it landed on last time. <laughs> that is not one of the factors that determines what color turns up. So gamblers, will convince themselves that this slot machine has got to pay off. It's been coming up cherries too often. Um, that this roulette wheel has got to go the other color. That these dice have got to turn up the... My brother-in-law told me that if a die has rolled four, that it has a higher probability of landing on... Okay, now I'm trying to remember what wrong thing he said. Some number seven, like... If you roll a four, I think with the two dice, then the next time you roll the dice, you have an inflated chance of getting an 11 or something. I can't even remember what he said because it's like, what are you talking about? Um, and in fact, I looked it up as far as like the physics of it and the um, statistical probabilities. And what they what the data shows is that the two numbers that he listed were actually exactly uh, the opposite relationship. If, if he said it was roll a four, you have a better chance of an 11, the, the data table showed roll a four, lower chance of an 11 next. And it's like, and <laughs> it's what allows him to think he has some kind of control when he's playing craps. He has no control. He's rolling dice, right? There's nothing you can do. I used to play Bunko in my old neighborhood and you know, you're like, all I need is fours. And it seems like that's all you can't get is fours. You're getting every other number except for four. Um, you know, they're gamblers want to feel like they have control over something that they don't have control over. That's the basic principle that I want to convey with this gambler's fallacy with regard to illusory correlations. All right. So that gets us to that illusion of control. Now, in case you think I'm gonna, I'm just picking on my brother-in-law or other, you know, Charlie's friend or whatever, I'm gonna hold up my mentor from graduate school who was in fact the advanced statistics professor. And he had two sons when I got to grad school. These are not his sons. These are two kids that I found on the internet. <laughs> so um, I just found, you know, be careful what you put on the internet because you may show up in my lectures. That's all I'm saying. So two little boys. Okay, so he had two sons. And his wife desperately wanted a daughter. And so she wanted to try again and hope for a daughter. Yay, she just really wanted a daughter. So he was, well, he was reluctant. He's like, uh, we've got enough kids. I don't want any more kids. I don't want to. Uh, with our luck, we'll have a boy, blah, blah. So she must have been really working it though, because he ultimately decided, well, I'm going to calculate out the probability that we would have another son. Like what is the pro the probability? And there's actually, a, like I've, I've been telling you, you can calculate stuff out. You gotta put the right stuff into the, into the um, equation, but you can calculate out the probabilities of things. So there's actually a, a calculation that you can enter um, given that you already have this outcome, what's the likelihood of getting it again or getting a different outcome, whatever. And so he put into the formula, given two sons, what's the probability of another son? And he came to the conclusion that the probability was one in six million that given that he already had two sons, that he would have another son. Now you guys are sitting there not being advanced statistics teachers. Is that 
the correct calculation that he did. Is that is that how he should have figured that out? Or should he have done the much simpler calculation that it's 50-50? Just like the roulette wheel, it's not like the current conception has any idea of what was here before and tells itself, well, I better be a girl this time because there's already been two boys. I mean, obviously not. Um, so he went to all this work, calculated it out, came to the conclusion it was one in six million when all he needed to really do is say to himself, it's a 50-50 shot each time. And he really should have done that because again, not his son, but he did have another boy. <laughs> so he ended up with three sons and he was very unhappy about it. He, I mean, he loves all three of his children, but he was just very unhappy with it. He kept saying, well, I, we might as well have two more and make a basketball team. Um, I'm putting urinals up in the bathroom. <laughs> he like, um, was very unhappy that, you know, he capitulated, he did his statistical probability calculation and, you know, nature betrayed him and gave him another boy. Um, but he didn't need to do any calculations. Um, he thought he had some kind of control right? I already have two boys. And so I have kind of control over the fact that it's probably not gonna be another boy because, you know, statistically it wouldn't be right. Well, you got to plug in the correct numbers or use the right calculation for your data. You can't just say I calculated something and statistics are on my side. The statistic was 50-50. All right, and another illusory correlation that I wanted to share with you is a just world hypothesis. Um, and this is a, a mindset that people kind of carry around with them where they don't mean to necessarily, but they sort of think to themselves that people get what they deserve. That, you know, if you put good things out, good things will come back, right? We call that karma. Put bad things out, bad things will come back. Um, you know, this idea that if something good happens to a person, they must somehow have deserved it if something bad happens to them, they must have somehow deserved it, right? They must have brought it on themselves. People get what they deserve is the just world hypothesis. It causes people to blame victims of random events. You know, we see it in, you know, when people get victimized, the victim oftentimes will get blamed for it. Like, why were you there? You know, it was middle of the night. Um, you were alone. Like, why would you do that? It's somehow your fault. Um, you know, if you get, um, defrauded, what's the word I'm looking for? Identity theft is the word I'm looking for. A lot of times people will be like, well, didn't you have life lock? And it's like, well, no, like I have passwords. I, I do all the things I'm supposed to do to protect my identity. Why are you blaming me? Right? Like these kinds of things where you get targeted and you're like, why me out of, out of all this stuff? Why me? Other people looking from the outside are like, what did that person do to deserve that? When something good happens, you know, you win the lottery or something like that, people will look and say, well, what right things did that person do to allow themselves to, to win the, the lottery? When the truth is, it's like, it's a random event. Um, so the just world hypothesis causes us to blame victims of random events and to, um, you know, credit the beneficiaries of, you know, good outcomes. Like they, they did something to deserve it. I wanted to share with you this one video to show you that after the Haiti earthquake, you know, Pat Robertson blamed um, Haiti's government for that. So I thought maybe you might enjoy seeing that. So it's, it's next in the playlist. You don't have to watch the whole thing. He says it right at the very beginning.